Hello, 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 and welcome to my first live stream from the Hoof TP trimming channel. This is not something I thought I would ever be doing, and uh, I hope it goes okay. I hope you can see this right now, otherwise I'm going to feel pretty silly in about 20 seconds when I realise you can't actually see it. So, first up, most of you guys who are tuning in right now know that I've been trimming cow's feet for the last eight years, and I just wanted to give everybody else a little bit of background about that. Basically, I started off trimming cow's feet eight years ago after my stepfather, who had trimmed cow's feet for 27 years, wouldn't stop hassling me and badgering me, trying to get me into this line of work. And I always told all of my customers at the time that I would never, ever be trimming cow's feet. Well, that kind of changed fairly rapidly, and I'm glad it did, because I absolutely love my vocation, um, as I hope you guys can see in the videos that I produce on YouTube. So why did YouTube come about though? Well, it's a kind of interesting one. I kept looking up on YouTube how to hoof trim cows, how to do this, how to do that, just to see what other guys were doing. And people were always trimming the really easy cows. And I thought, well, that's not really helping anybody. It's not teaching anybody anything special. And it's certainly not showing the true sort of, the true life behind a hoof trimmer's knife, if it, as it were. So yeah, I started so that I could teach people across the world how to better take care of their cows and hopefully I'm doing that. Um, I get loads of feedback from you guys and I really, really, really appreciate it. I really, really do. Something else that you guys have prompted me to do and encouraged me to do, which I genuinely never thought would um, come about or something, it didn't think it would be something that I would do, is crowdfunding. Um, on a recent video, I, I've mentioned a few times about my crush maybe not being up to par and on a recent video somebody started a little thread about crowdfunding for a crush. Well, I kind of did actually go ahead and start a GoFundMe page. Um, you guys shouldn't feel like you have to donate anything or anything like that. Um, don't donate anything too big because I'd feel really, really guilty. Obviously it would help massively and it would mean I could actually teach people on a one-to-one -one basis. So if you do want to, the link is in the description of this video and it will be on all of the ones to come. So anyway, I want to look at the live feed and see what you guys are saying right now. So Debbie Johnson, everybody wants to hear about poo dodging and life behind the knife. Well, I'm pretty sure you guys see what I do on a daily basis. I don't really dodge the poo. I get covered in it. Uh, it's, I was going to say a perk of the job, but it's certainly not a perk of the job. It's a hassle and to be honest, I see it as a positive thing because it means less people want to do what I'm doing in my daily routine. So it means that maybe my field of expertise is a little bit, um, it's not as competitive as it should be. Gems Revenge, I wanted to know, I wanted to know how dealing with live flesh and hooves varies from abscesses. Do cows feel the pain? Do you use anesthesia? What do I do? Well, to be honest, live flesh should never really be an issue. Um, sometimes it will be, but I shouldn't be cutting live flesh. And any hoof trimmer who is cutting things like that shouldn't be doing it at all. That, in the UK anyway, is a job for the vets. So. When I get close to live flesh or anything like that, I'll do all sorts of things that I can to avoid actually cutting any live flesh, so I'm not putting the cow in any pain. When a cow walks into the crush, she might be really, really crazy lame. And my job, no matter, even if it's a fraction, my job is to make her feel more comfortable when she leaves the crush. If that means that she's not necessarily healed in one trim, then so be it. But I've done my job by making the cow more comfortable and more profitable for the farmers and much, much happier in herself as she goes about her daily life. A lot of people forget that the cow is in your crush for five or six or seven minutes, ten minutes sometimes if it's a big problem. So to you, her problem's only there for ten minutes. But for the cow, it's for the next day, the next week, the next month, the next three months. So it's so important not to cut things away that we really, really don't have to. K Hex, hello. Love watching your channel. Husband grew up on a farm. My husband never. Who else? Oliver880. What time are you going live in the United States? I don't know what time it is there. My friends live in Wisconsin. It's a six hour time difference. So I tried to make it half five where you guys are. Um, and do I ever plan on visiting the USA? 
I really nearly visited the USA about three weeks ago, but work got in the way. Um, I'm extremely busy, and unfortunately, plans sometimes go out of the window, uh, much to Aaron Lavoie's dismay. He wasn't a happy bunny, but in the coming weeks, I'm going across to Southern Ireland to work or play alongside Aaron Lavoie, so I should be making amends there. So Aaron, if you're watching, I'm sorry for not making the conference, but I promise to make it up to you and buy you beer when I see you in Southern Ireland. Jane Grieve, do cows get thrush like horses do? Kinda. So we don't call it thrush, we call it fowl in the foot. And there's a video on the channel that goes really, really into deep details about fowl in the foot. So it's the same bacteria that are involved and the same kind of um, logistics, if you like. When cows' feet become really, really wet in that space up in between their feet, that basically, you know when you're in the bath and you get all kind of crinkled up and you start cracking if you've been in the bath too long? Well, the skin in between the feet does the same thing. And basically, it cracks, allows the bacteria in. That bacteria is um, combated by the cow's immune system, which makes swelling happen, and then you've got a cow in some serious, serious pain. So yeah, it does happen. Uh, wish it didn't. I'm looking down here because I'm looking at your comments, by the way. Hi from Detroit, Michigan. How do cows? How do cow hoofs do it in the wild? Obviously, they don't have professional trimmers. Well, part of the reason I've got such a busy life is because cows aren't naturally in houses. They're not naturally milked twice a day or three times a day or four times a day. They're not naturally in calf every 10 or 11 months. So there are lots and lots of different um, strains and different problems forced upon cows um, within farms, especially in the UK, America, Australia, all over the world that they don't come up against in the wild. So out in the wild, normally the cows will avoid wet areas, they'll be on harder ground, drier ground, so their feet look after themselves and they tend to walk a lot more. Wild elk in Canada, actually, there's a lot of studies goes on with them and they actually have a lot of problems and they are actually culled um, and lameness is one of the things they use to cull them. So in answer to your question, Sometimes they don't deal with lameness very well in the wild um, and humans in, uh, interject in situations like that, especially with wild elk. Also the herding instinct kicks in. So what happens is, and this is a problem for farmers actually, it's something I've never covered on the channel, but what happens is because they're herding animals, if the cow who is lame is at the back of the herd, she's liable to be picked off by a lion or a cheetah or a puma or whatever, she would come up against in the wild. So they're very, very good at hiding lameness, which means it's really difficult sometimes to spot small problems in lame cows. So they can be missed quite easily. Block Heyday, hi from the UK and was wondering, is there a need for hoof trimmers? Uh, not in my area, go somewhere else. No, I encourage anybody who wants to start hoof trimming, I encourage it. There's always a need for hoof trimmers. And the good thing about new people starting is the old guys really, really have to up their game and really, really sort of implement their knowledge and keep growing and expanding all the things they're learning. So it's really, really good for new hoof trimmers to be starting off. Um, and right now, I know there is a slight shortage because... I'm slightly too busy. Uh, I do turn away quite a few people, which I don't like doing because then, yeah, it's not good. Anyway, uh, I'd rather be a flying saucer, a good name. Uh, I visited Mr. Tom P today on the farm uh, to see the new Highland cows. New to me anyway. Yep, I saw Harriet, uh, Kate and I can't remember the other one. But yeah, I speak to Mr. P a couple of times. I don't really know him. I kind of would like to know him better. And I used to actually live about three miles up the road from him in a windmill. Yeah, I lived in a windmill. Uh, are you kept busy or do you have slow time, says California 707. So I am pretty much crazy busy. I've got a four weekly schedule and in that schedule um, I have two days out of that those 28 days where I keep spare so that if some of my old customers or my customers who aren't booked in a schedule phone, then I can attend them. Because obviously, if I said no, I've got no dates, then my customers would dwindle. So yeah, I am pretty much flat out, but I do have busier periods. So how can that be? Well, during the autumn, a lot of people, especially beef customers, are looking to start breeding again, and they need to make sure they're bulls are in tip-top condition. So what happens is I've got all my dairy farms, which are on schedule routines, like 
two weekly or four weekly. And then I get guys phoning up wanting two or three bulls done here or there. And that actually really, really ties me up. I really enjoy it because it's a good channel. I, uh, good channel. It's a good number um, money-wise and it's good for seeing lots of different people and seeing different environments and it keeps me from uh, becoming bored. So I get really busy because trimming one bull takes about the same time as trimming five cows. And if it's just one bull on one farm, I still need to wash, still need to set up. So it can take two hours just to trim one bull. Anyway, Susan Hall, hello. Thanks for telling that guy it was 17 minutes. Susan Solly, when you take a well, when you take a well-deserved vacation, where do you and your family go? Love your informative vlogs. We go to Mallorca and we love it. So we try to visit Mallorca once or twice a year. It's amazing. If you've never been to Mallorca, go. Go to the northeast, uh, northwestern coast of Mallorca. The mountains are fantastic and the uh, weather and food is amazing. I came back a stone heavier once. True story. Hello from Iowa. Hello. Hello from KSA. Is that Kansas? KSA? Um, I'm not sure. Hi from Nebraska. I have a picture of a bullfoot I need you to check out. Would you be willing to have a look at it and suggest what I what I should do for her? Mike Solwald. Well, Mike, actually, I've got a little bit of paper in front of me here of things I should talk about. And one of them is a thing called Sunday Surgery that I'm kind of thinking about doing. I get an awful lot of guys on Facebook and Instagram sending me messages or videos and pictures of their cattle and asking me what can I do about this? Have I done this right? Uh, what do you think of the results of this? So in answer to your question, send me the picture on Facebook and I'll tell you exactly what I think you should do. To everybody else who's watching, send me pictures, send me videos in landscape, so sideways, so that I can tell you better what to do with your cows. I don't mind sitting there writing to you at all. If I can help you at all or give you little pointers, then fair game. And if you want to send me some videos, I plan on uploading some videos where I chat through your problem cows with you. Don't worry, you can be anonymous if you like. Just tell me in the in the message so that everybody else on the World Wide Web from India to Istanbul, from Moscow to Massachusetts can also learn along with you because it's not just you who's struggling with fixing complicated white line problems, for instance. <sighs> Leo Parker, 100 people. Hello, Leo. You're my nephew. Thanks for videoing the last one. By the way, the last video that was uploaded, my nephew is Leo Parker, and it was him that did all of the videoing in that. So thanks very much. He charged me £30, though. What's that all about? Hi from New Zealand. It's early New Zealand. Uh, tomorrow early, I think. And probably summertime, too. Farm life with New Holland and sheep. New Holland? If it ain't red, keep it in the shed. Do you like New Holland? I love New Holland. I kind of do. Uh, I'm a faint guy, though, to be honest. <laughs> See, Bev, do you own any cows? No, I don't own any cows. My so we, I grew up on two farms, and we owned about 500 cows. But my father died uh, in an accident. He drowned when I was 15. Uh, long story cut short, uh, the farm was sold, we didn't keep the farm, my mother now owns a coffee shop, and we all went separate ways. I've got four brothers and sisters, so no, I don't own any cows. Sabine Quaid, hi from Germany, you have so much fun at your job, I think you love, I think you love your patients, and you love your job. Does one of your children want to do the same job as you? So I've got three kids, you guys have only seen two of them, you've seen Kia and Campbell, otherwise known as Kiki and Bam Bam, and I have a daughter called Maddie. So Maddie cannot stand farms. Bam Bam really, really likes them, but he's a total liability, so uh, he's not been around farms that much. And Kiki, or Kia, loves them. He is fantastic. He was actually out trimming with me three days ago. Um, he was bringing up the... He's five years old, and he was bringing up the cows. He says he would love to be a hoof trimmer, but he can be anything he wants. He can be a fairy or a lawyer for all I care. As long as he's happy doing it, then I'm happy. Uh, the Sneaky Fox. I'm not a farmer, but a trucker. Hello from the Hawkova. Oh, hello, Hawkova. You're very, very close, aren't you? Uh, Tracy Cabral, Tennessee here. Uh, that's the deep south. Deep south. Emily Barker. Would you ever allow someone to do a ride-along? Uh, Emily, check out some of the videos. There are a few people who have done ride-alongs in the videos, but in general, I 
probably had 10 or 11 or 12 people come out with me. Over the years, I've had quite a few people contact me from Wales, Germany, England, a couple from Ireland, Scotland, obviously, and I've taken them out. It's really good for me to work alongside people. It might seem a bit counterintuitive that you're introducing somebody to your line of work and showing them what you do, but to be honest, I love it because it challenges me um, there's somebody sitting there right there. I can't edit the problems out. I can't edit any of my mistakes out. So it really pushes me to make sure everything I do is spot on and my knowledge is really, really up as high as it can possibly be. Homestead in the Highlands. You comment quite a bit. Are you actually from the Highlands? I wondered that. Um, he did a video about grinding discs and would be good for you to watch. I did. Uh, a lot of people ask me what grind discs I use. Well, I did one that was quite in depth. I used Trimtech Titan Titaniums. They're about 250 quid. The aluminium version is fantastic for you guys uh, trimming at home. And the reason one is cheaper than the other is the aluminium won't last as long. It'll last you maybe 10,000 cows though, so that's pretty good, isn't it? Uh, Robert Horton, what are the qualifications to be a hoof trimmer? Is there a degree or a certificate? Now here is a big sticking point and it's something that quite quite commonly I'm a little bit outspoken about and maybe I shouldn't be. So technically nobody has to do any sort of qualification whatsoever to be a hoof trimmer. My children could go out and be a professional hoof trimmer if they like. What we're trying to do in the UK here is we're really, really trying to promote professionalism and there's a body called the NACFT where a fantastic guy called Neil Barrett is the chairman. Now, what it does is it tries. It, we're trying to implement regulation where there is a licensing system. Right now, there is one, what well, they say it is, but it's nothing really. It's just uh, something you can say you've got a license. Personally, I went down and did like a week's training, then another week's training in four days. Then I did a diploma, and then you go back every six, uh, every two years and do a check day, which I'm due to do one actually, but I haven't. Um, so no, you don't need a certificate, but you should go and get one because you're dealing with animals and you need to make them as comfortable as you possibly can. Uh, the DVT Lovely Highlands, yep. I live in Moray between Inverness and Aberdeen. It is the Highlands. Well, Homestead and Highlands, I used to live in Drumna Drocket, which is home to the Loch Ness Monster when I run hotels. I love it up there. Brilliant. Especially the Black Isle. It is really good. And I've got a lot of customers, or used to have a lot of customers around there. Jess Cox. Love your videos. Just recently subscribed, but I'm catching up on the older ones. Thanks for sharing your craft with us. Well, Jess, a lot of people don't watch the one about the Belties or the Oreo cows. Go and watch it because it's my favourite by a mile. It won't teach you anything about hoof trimming, but I loved making that video. Cindy Neal. Tyler, that's my question too. What was Tyler's question? Uh, it's non-sterile. How do you prevent infection? That's a difficult one. Um, so if you wrap, a lot of guys wrap a lot of things, and you'll notice from my videos that I really don't wrap many things at all. When I apply a wrap, the wrap isn't to keep the lesion or the foot clean. If you get your hand and you wrapped it up with something and then you dunked it in a pile of poo and urine, then your hand would be soaking, it would become nice and warm and it would be the perfect place for a bacteria to grow. So I use iodine. I know I've gone about it an awful lot and you guys are probably sick of me mentioning that iodine, but it dries things out, it sterilizes, it encourages new cellular growth and it's fantastic at what it does. The best way to try and keep something uh, from getting an infection, obviously, is to keep it clean and dry. So if, you can, if you've got a cow that has an open lesion or a foul in the foot or dermatitis, cleanliness is absolutely key. When you go to a farm that is clean, as soon as you arrive on that farm as a hoof trimmer, you know the feet are going to be good. And it's not necessarily down to hoof trimming or good husbandry. The cleanliness is the key. Moth aboard gaming. Favourite place in the world, uh, St Maidens. If you look at, well, two places actually. There's one place called St Maidens, which is a golf course, and that's where I grew up in South West Scotland. And the other place is called, I don't remember it, Sacalabra. Look up Sacalabra Road, Mallorca, and you'll see exactly why it's my favourite place. Uh, silly Drawn T-shirt. Hello, how are you doing? I, well, I don't speak to you a lot, but I see you a lot. 
Uh, what is your favourite piece of merchandise? Uh, it's not this. I really like this. But the hoodie with the tartan cow on, it's really, really good. I like it. I was so impressed when I came up with the tartan cow logo. Uh, what percentage of iodine is 10%? So, uh, yeah, I use 10% neat iodine. Uh, if you're in the States, which I don't know if you are, then you guys can actually get about, I think it's 8, 7% is the strongest you'll probably get from like Annie Mart or somewhere like that. Uh, Mark Green, hey, how you doing? What type of cow have you... What type of cow have the most work you do for their milk cows or cows raised for meat? The milk cows look like they're always in wet environment. So personally, I do by far the most amount of work on dairy cattle because predominantly they're housed inside and um, they are under far more pressures than beef cows. So in order to ensure their comfort and their continued well-being, then you've got to trim them about twice a year, two and a half times which is about every five months. So I am trimming around 1,100 um, dairy cows per year, uh, uh, not per year, per month, uh, and probably around 150 beef cows, maybe not even that. Uh, Lady Weasel, I can't help but notice how much claws remind me of Brazil nuts when you trim them. They kind of do, I suppose, but they don't taste like them. Kate Bright, scent. Sent before the question, question, what is the average number of cattle treated daily? So I get asked that a lot as well. I like to trim about 50 cows a day because that means I can be chilled out, I can be re relaxed and just take my time. Generally speaking, I trim around 60 cows a day, but I have trimmed 164, I think, is the most I've ever trimmed. Um, but believe it or not, that was actually one of my easier days because the cow's feet were almost perfect. It was more a case of checking their feet than actually trimming them. So the answer is 60, 60 cows a day is average. Hey, South Africa, Praline Chevelle. Right, just before I get further on with your questions, I need to say thank you to a couple of people. So... As I said earlier in this live stream, I, I stuttering away there. <laughs> As I said earlier in the live stream, a few people uh, really, really pushed me and encouraged me to start this GoFundMe page to get a new crush so that I can treat the cows more comfortably and it's better for me, safer for the cows and better for the farmers. And a couple of people, uh, without really prompting anybody, went straight ahead and uh, actually donated, which I couldn't believe. So Susan Fernandes, Ursula St. Clair, Sheila Ullman, Andy and Brett, and Lonnie Fraser. Thank you so much. Your generosity uh, makes me speechless. I really, really don't know what to say to people like that. Like, you guys are amazing. Never mind... Uh, doing any of the donations or anything. Just commenting and watching these videos really, really, really spurs me on. I really enjoy making them, but they do take hours and hours and hours and hours. Anyway, farm life with New Holland. Goodbye. How often do cows escape the machine and what's your favourite breed of cow? Says Ikiana Trinidad. Uh, favourite breed of cow is probably Charlie because when I grew up, we had quite a few pedigree Charlie bulls. One was called Charlie the Charlie, very, very original name. So I love Charlie cows. Uh, didn't ask, but my least favourite is jerseys. They're probably more intelligent than any other cow, and it causes a few problems for me along the way. Uh, how often do they escape the machine? Uh, not very often at all. Maybe two a week. Uh, if they're too quick, they jump, and the head gate shuts like this. So if you've seen the the video with the big Lemmy Bull, big orange one that is, he escaped by doing the exact thing I'm talking about. Hello from Montreal. Why are you called American boy if you're saying hello to, from Montreal? But hey, anyway. Uh, farming, fixing and fabricating. Hey, I think you're from New York. I think you commented another video. Uh, would you consider using a, trim, a table to trim on? Yes, I definitely would. Uh, a lot of the ones in the UK are not particularly well designed. Sorry if that's you watching it, watching me right now. But the Tuffy Tilts, uh, some of the extreme shoots, if they're working well, are fantastic. So yeah, I would definitely consider doing it. And hopefully I'll get a little go in Southern Ireland in two weeks' time. Uh, Chris Askew, message retracted. Was it rude? Uh, do you ever work with the chap who has buffalo in... Five, Stevie. No, I don't work with Stevie. Uh, 
Funny enough, I was thinking the other day that I would really like to trim some water buffalo, uh, and Stevie's a great guy, so yeah. Do you have any opinions on good or bad things common in Dexter feet? I don't trim Dexter feet because they are so difficult uh, to deal with in the crush, because my crush is designed for larger cows. But I would imagine that Dexter have very, very good feet because their flesh content, so the fat con content throughout their bodies, pretty high so if you watch the car and the pickup video you'll know why that would be good for the feet basically it's like having big thick tires on the feet so dexters should have very good feet don west jr have you ever burned horns off any bulls or dairy cows before when i was a kid and we had farms yes i have uh, under the instruction of a vet because in britain we need to use a qualified vet for anaesthesia so yes i have when i was much younger what are dexters dexters are tiny little cows look them up they're like uh kind of like shetland ponies tiny homestead in the highlands saw that video thank you you're welcome uh far vladimir joretovsky hello from russia can you breed buffalo born from the same mother can you can you breed buffalo born from the same mother? Uh, no, you can't because it would cause serious problems. Um, if you do any sort of interbreeding like that, it's going to cause major problems, usually skeletal problems, so defects and things. Uh, let's ask you, sorry, I had a misspelling. I was saying you should reach out to these companies who make these products products and have them donate to you well funnily enough a couple of those companies have actually reached out to me and have offered me things uh, i've turned a few of them down to be honest because i don't want to look like i'm biased I just want to give you guys honest opinions david mcvee hey man you up for the daily shift what would you recommend to someone wanting to learn basic trimming cheers big man uh, so there's a company called embryonics if you're in the uk and they do like one day trimming courses. So the best idea is to get a farmer or if you want to farm yourself, phone them, offer to have a course done at your farm and you'll get a big discount. Then phone all of your friends, tell them to bring a dairyman round and they'll charge you about, I think it's about 300 pounds for a day. It'll give you the basics. And that's really all you need to keep on top of basic animal foot trimming or basic cow foot trimming. So do a one day course, uh, it's cheap, it's easy, and it will give you the basics to get your cow care on point. Uh, Dishi, you just answered it. Hello, Zing Chen Wang from London. Good British name there, Zing Chen Wang. Am I saying that right, Zing Chen Wang? Um, Canigan Collins, why did you decide to do what you do and how long did the education take? So I've answered this one a few times. I was in hospitality for years and years and years. My father was a farmer and my stepfather was a hoof trimmer. It's kind of natural progression. Hated the hospitality job that I was in. My stepfather was ill at the time, so I came back to the fold and looked after his business and loved it. Uh, so I've never changed back, to be honest. Uh, Anyway, guys, I'm going to have to wrap it up there. I've really, really enjoyed my first um, my first live stream. I hope you guys have too. Sorry I can't ask, answer any more questions, but I'm going to wake up my boys if I do. Um, so things I wanted to say are the GoFundMe page. Thank you to everyone who's donated. You're amazing. Thank you very, very much. The Sunday Surgery. Look me up on Facebook or Instagram with any photos or videos you have. Put them in landscapes so or sidey ways and send them to me with what you've been doing with them, what you would like to know from me and tell me if you'd like to have those hoofs um, rated or talked about on the channel on a Sunday. Uh, I'm going to Ireland soon so if you're in Ireland in two weeks time you should look up the Irish Foot Trimmers Hoof Trimming Association Conference which uh, I'm going to, but I'm not like talking or anything like that. I'm just going for the beer and for the crack, to be honest. Uh, and that's me, guys. Thanks very much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Keep subscribing. Uh, I'm almost at 50,000 subscribers, which is absolutely mental. Um, and 10 million views. 10 million views. I only started this channel just as a little bit of a play around to help a few guys out and I didn't think it was going to lead to this. So thanks very much for your continued support and that picture.
behind me is of a Spanish fighting bull. Uh, I got drunk and bought it at an auction last April. Anyway, guys, cheers. Thanks very much for watching. Smack the subscribe button and keep watching. Bye now.